Hello and welcome back to another video on functions and graphs. Today we're going to continue by looking at our functions side of this topic and we're going to be talking about a particular type of functions called composite functions and what it means to compose two or more functions. So what is a composite function and what does it mean to compose two functions? Well, simply to put it, to compose two functions would mean to insert one function into another function to get a brand new function. So we would say that two functions can be what we say as composed to form, and when we compose them, they will form a brand new function called a composite function. And we'll look at what we mean by this. So let's say we had two functions. We'll take our first function here, f of x, and we'll say that this takes the value x and divides it by 2. Now we'll create a new function which we'll call g of x this time to make it different from f of x and this time we'll say that g of x is simply the function x squared so it takes an input value x and it squares it. We call the composite function a function that does both of these. So for example this here is a composite function and it's visualized with a bit of a diagram because what it does is it takes our value x, it squares it, which our g of x does to get x squared, and then it does what our second function does, f of x, and halves it. So we get x squared divided by 2. And it's very important to note the way we do this because if we were to do this the other way around, let's say we have first and then square. If we do that, we'd start with x. This time round, we would get x over 2. And if we square that, we will get x squared over 4. So when doing composite functions with two functions, it's very important to make sure we're doing them the right way round. As you can see, this composite function, which looks very similar to this composite function here, it squares and halves them. But this one here, halves and then squares it. So we get a complete different answer when we do it the other way around. So what are we doing when we do this uh, composite function? Well, we are simply just inputting one function into another function. So anywhere we have x in this, we are putting in g of x. So we would denote that composite function as f of g x instead of just x this time because this will simply equal f and our g of x function is x squared. So you can see when we plug in x squared into this here, we'll get x squared over two. And we call this thing here a composite function because it composes two functions to give us a brand new function. However, if we were to do this the other way around, let's say this time we do g of f of x, which is very similar, except we do it the other way around. This time we are finding the function g of x over 2, because this is our f of x, which when we substitute x over 2 into this, we get x over 2 squared. Square the top and bottom, we get x squared over 4. And we can see that these two are not the same. So when we're talking about composite functions, order is very important as when we compose a function with another one they will give us a new function but if we were to do them the other way around they will give us a completely different function so again to reiterate what we've done here what we have done is we've taken our function and we have substituted instead of x we have substituted in a completely new function g of x to give us this term here. So we can rewrite this as the function f of whatever our gx is, which is x squared. And what we do is we substitute that in to what it would be in f. So we'd get x squared 
over two. And we've done the same here and we call this the composite function. So composite functions can seem quite tricky at first, but when you do a little bit of practice with them, by repetition of practice, they become quite easy and they're not too difficult to do. So let's do a little question to do with functions here and it looks like we're going to be working with composite functions. Our first question A, however, just asks us to find f of two. Now in the question it says functions f and g are defined by the function f of x equals 2x and g of x equals x minus 3. So we're first asked to find f where x is 2. So anywhere we see an x, we're going to substitute in 2. So we'll get 2 times 2. So for a, it's simply going to be 4. For part b, we are asked to find the composite function f of g of x. And the best way to work this out is start by changing g of x to what that function actually is. So instead of g of x, we'll write x minus 3. So this time, anywhere we see an x in f of x, we're changing that to x minus 3. So we're simply going to have 2, and then instead of x, we're going to have x minus 3. Now note we've put this in brackets because it's 2 times all of this, not 2x minus 3. So this will give us the composite function 2x, expanding the brackets, minus 6. Now you don't need to expand it, it would be completely fine to leave it as this, but I've just expanded it to show us what the expanded version of this composite function would be. Moving on to part C, we are asked to find the composite function g of f of x. Now again, the order is very important here. Remember, whatever is outside of the bracket is the function that you're ultimately going to be working out. So this time we know we're going to get a different value than this here. So let's take a look. We're going to look for the function g of f of x, which is 2x. And we substitute 2x into g of x, wherever we have any x's. And we're going to get 2x. Now I'm putting it in brackets just in case. And we're going to have minus 3. And the brackets don't really matter here. Always just being careful. So we get 2x minus 3 which is our composite function of g of f of x. And as you can see, these two are different. So here we have another composite functions question where we are told functions f and g are defined on suitable domains by the function f of x, which equals x cubed plus one, and g of x equals 1 over x. Now, if you need to remind yourself about what a domain is, be sure to check our video on domains. But here we are told they are on suitable domains, which means they should be okay to use when working with them. So here we've got our two functions, and the question says to find formulae for... Now, we've got a new function here, which tells us h of x equals the composite function f of g of x and k of x equals the composite function g of f of x. So we're just asked to find the two composite functions in this case. However, this question has denoted them by a new function. So sometimes you'll find that as, as expressing this composite function, they will just call it a completely new function to keep things nice and neat. So we say that h of x equals f of g of x and for these kind of questions um, sometimes they like you to work uh, by writing out the uh, function first and then substituting in your value just so you know exactly what you're doing if you were to jump straight to the fact that h of x equals uh, and then what it would be you would not get all marks so it's very important to show all you're working for these kind of questions just to show that you know that you're finding the function f of whatever g is, which is 1 over x. So it's best to do all your working for these kind of questions. So we're finding f of 1 over x, which is going to be 1 over x all cubed plus 1. Um, and this would actually be fine to leave it as this, but if you were to expand it, you would see you'd get 1 over x cubed plus 1. But it's completely fine to leave it as either of these two. And remember that this is 
the function h of x. Our next function we're asked to work out, which is they call k of x, you'll often find that f, g, h, and k are the values they'll use for functions. And we know that k of x is g of f of x. Oops. Like so. So this time we know we're working out the function g of whatever f of x is, which is x cubed plus 1, which when we substitute into g, we are simply getting 1 divided by whatever it is, which is x cubed plus 1. And this is going to be our function for k of x. So that is composite functions.